right, friends. <laughs> um, we have our traveling opera here for you guys. I think last year fifth graders were the ones who got to see this, but we know that you guys are so well behaved and so respectful that we thought we'd bring it down to the fourth grade. Honestly, there's six classes in here and they were just left to talk and they're this quiet and they get this quiet and they're this respectful. So you guys are doing awesome today. Remember, just like when we had the cartoonist, we need to make sure that we give them your utmost respect, make sure that you're responsible and kind to them as well. There'll be lots of you chosen to come up and do some things as well. So it's very interactive. Make sure we're quiet. Make sure we're paying attention. And I think you'll really enjoy it. Yep. Yep. Thank you so much. We are delighted to be back up here in Piqua. We are all from uh, the Dayton area in Beaver Creek. A lot of us are from Beaver Creek down way down south from here. But we are delighted to be here today with you. And okay, I'll be this. Maybe you can hear me better now, right? Okay, good. Um, my name is Mrs. Roundtree, and all of us here dressed in black are in black because we're going to be invisible while we do this, okay? We'll be working with you one-on-one, -on -one, but you have to not pay attention to us. You have to pay attention to whoever's going to be performing for us. Um, our accompanist today is Mrs. Ethelson. Kimberly, let's give her a warm up. Today, what we are doing is an operetta. Does anybody know the difference between an opera and an operetta? What do you think? Well, they both have stories, but you're on the right track. Can you add something? Well, they both have instruments, but one is all singing, the opera, telling the story through all singing, and the operetta has some speaking to it, too. And that's what we will be doing today. Anybody know the name of the operetta that we're going to do today with you? What do you think? Pirates of... Not the Caribbean. <laughs> Pirates of Penzance. Penzance. Say it with me. Penzance. Penzance is actually a real town on the southwestern side of England. Okay, Great Britain. Um, let's see. The composer. What does a composer do? What do you think a composer? Right. Yeah, writes the music, exactly. What does the lyricist do? What's a lyric anyway? Anybody knows? Yes? I couldn't hear you. You had your hand up there. How can we like that? The words? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The lyricist writes the words. In this case, the composer is Sullivan and the lyricist is Gilbert. We know them oftentimes as Gilbert and Sullivan. Um, right now, I want to introduce our opera singer that we brought with us. She will be playing the lead role of Mabel. So let's give her a warm welcome. opera singer. Uh, does anyone in here like to sing? You! Alright, that's awesome. Um, so, opera's really cool. It's kind of like an ancient technique used for singing. It's like very, very one of the oldest ways. We started singing, um, and it specifically got a lot of its foundings in Italy. Um, and in Italy, we have this technique we use called del capo. Can you guys say that? Del capo. Very Italian. Good job. Um, so del capo means from the head, right? From the top of the head. So one of the warm-ups I do to make sure my singing is del capo is I practice something called a siren. So I thought it would be fun. Do you guys want to try to do a siren with me? Okay, so this is what a siren looks like. I'm going to take the mic away because it's pretty loud. It goes. That's fun. So you start at the very lowest note that you have. Can you guys find that note? Nice. And we're going to go to the very highest note you have. We're going to slide up and we're going to slide down just like a slide whistle, okay? So let's try it. Three. That's the only time 
anyone will ever ask you to scream inside. <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys love the show, and I hope you can learn a little bit about opera and how it works. Have a good time. Thank you so much. Let's give her a round. on the chairs in just a few moments. We'll go through that. But if you are selected up here, you have to know how to pantomime. Act it out. Yes, you're going to be copying one of your volunteers. It's very important for you to watch whoever you are paired up with as a volunteer. Remember, the volunteers are all in black. Because that person will be standing on the sides or in the back. And if they do this, what do you think you're supposed to do? Show me. There you go. All right, let's try a couple more. Um, without any talking or sounds, show me shock. Oh, excellent. Excellent. I like that. I love that. Super. How about trembling? It's like you're shaking because you're so scared. What about singing? No sound. Singing, show me singing. I only see one or two arms up, but remember this is dramatic operetta. Wee. No sound, no sound. Okay, very good, that's what you will do, but it's very important to look at your person that's showing that to you, okay? And to listen to the narrator. Today I will be the narrator telling you what's happening. So you have to listen. Know who your character is, and if it says your character walks over here, you'll see your person walk over there, and you walk over there too, whatever, like that. Okay, um, it's really important to always face the audience. Really important to always face the audience. So if you have your toes pointing towards the audience, you'll be fine, okay? And then that way you can turn to whoever you're talking to, they can still see your faces and you can see what's going on. But if they tend to upstage you, that means I have to turn around like this and then you can't see me because I've got my back to you and you can't see her because I'm blocking her. So make sure you always are facing your audience. Even when it's a whole bunch of you up here, try to stand side by side and get along the same way, okay? Um, we have some uh, words that we want you to know what they are because they're going to they're gonna come up in our first act here. Upstage, I just even used that word just a minute ago. It means when you are standing back by the, by the drops like that. That's upstage, okay? And downstage is just the opposite. It's closest to the audience, like this. We also have an apprentice an apprentice is someone who learns a trade or an occupation by working with somebody who already knows how to do it, like a student teacher would be. Have you ever had a student teacher? Okay, then you kind of know what an apprentice is, okay? An orphan is someone whose parents are no longer alive. Retreat means to fall back, okay? You're going away. The pilot. We all know what a pilot is when it comes to airplanes, but guess what? No airplanes existed when this operetta was written. So what do you think a pilot is? Yes, sir? Yes, he's in charge of the boat. He, he steers it and he takes, takes it where it needs to go. That's the pilot here. Okay, Union Jack looks just like this little flag right here. It's the flag of Great Britain. You can see that it's a red cross on the uh, blue and white background, like that. And that's called what? Say it again. Union Jack. Say it louder. Union Jack! So you're going to have to remember that's what that kind of flag is called, okay? All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can get some 
volunteers up here. Well, you don't even know what you're volunteering for. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad to see eager faces like this. But let's see. First of all, we are going to pick a pirate king. Mr. Wayne is going to be picking for us. He's going to work with a pirate king. <laughs> and then follow him. Follow him. Yeah, just follow. Follow your. You're, you're going to be working one on one with him. Frederick is a very important character in our opera. So would we please pick Frederick now? Frederick. Okay, very good. Then we have some pirates, four pirates who uh, work with the pirate king. Who's going to pick for the pirates? Here we go. <laughs> then we need four, four daughters. I know what I forgot to show you. One quick thing. If we get a little too noisy, like we were just then, I may hold up my hand. And you may hear Mr. Kimberly do that. What do you think that means? Bring it back down. Okay, good. So we need to bring it back down so we can hear the narration. We need Ruth. Ruth is an older woman who has been a nanny for a long time, and now she works in the pirates. She sings a solo. is the father of all these beautiful daughters up here. And he's a general, so he's strong. Oh. Okay. We have a police sergeant. And then we have three policemen. Keep your hands up high if you want to be a police person. Okay. Now, I think we've got all the characters selected for now, but remember, you are an important part. You're the audience, okay? And when somebody does something that you really like, you might say bravo, and you would probably do this. Applause. Let's try that right now. Exactly. Okay. Well, we have something that you are going to be doing as a whole audience here too, is singing the song. And I'm not sure if you know it or not, but we're going to learn it right now. This is a birthday song that the pirates are going to be singing to Frederick, okay? Right at the beginning of the show. But actually, you're all going to be singing it. So right now, I'm going to sing it for you. Hold it up real high. And on the, where it says 505, Five with the person next to you. If you're sitting in between two people, you can do it on both sides. Five, just like that, okay? So it sounds like this. You gotta get that support from down here while you're singing, okay? And I want we're gonna sing it twice this time. Alright, here we go. Ready? Sing. Sing, oh, sing the pirates.
Pirate King walks over to Frederick and says, Here's good luck to Frederick, our old junior pirate, who is 21 years old today. At 12 o'clock, his long apprenticeship will end. And then he will be a full-fledged member of our band. The pirates all pump their fists and shout, Hurrah! Hurrah! <laughs> Frederick rises from the rock, moves downstage, and says, My friends, I, I thank you for all your kindly wishes. I'm sorry that I cannot repay you as you deserve. The pirate he is confused and he walks up to Frederick and asks, what do you mean? Frederick replies, I must leave today forever. The pirates look at each other in shock. The pirate king shouts, leave? How can you think of leaving when you have learned your trade so well? Frederick says, I've done my best for you. It was my duty. And I am a slave of duty, but my apprenticeship was a mistake. The pirate king cannot believe what he is hearing, and he asks, what mistake? Frederick replies, I cannot tell, because it would reflect upon my dear Ruth. Ruth comes forward to Frederick and says, Master Frederick, you have shielded me long enough. Then she turns to the pirate king and says, It was my mistake, sir. This is how it happened. And she steps down the stage, center, towards him. And she sings when Frederick was a little lad. Frederick. The pirate king turns to the rest of the pirates 
and pointing to Ruth says, am I right in saying that not one of us here would rob Frederick of this priceless treasure? The pirates all shout in a loud voice, not one. Not one. Back and forth, Frederick and the pirate king tossed Ruth between them. <laughs> Say, you keep her. No, she's yours. No, I insist you take her. Finally, Ruth pushes away, steps forward, and yells, Stop. I'm not a rubber ball to be bounced between the two of you. Let me alone. Ruth goes over to the rock and sits with her back to them. Frederick asks the pirate king to join him back in civilization. But the pirate king says, no, I shall live and die a pirate king. And he sings, oh, better far to live and die a pirate king.
The maidens are all daughters of the major general. They come on stage carrying picnic items. They look around and like the spot that they have come upon. They decide to wade in the water to cool off. But just then, Frederick steps forward up to the ladies and says, Stop, ladies, I pray. They ask him who he is. And Frederick replies, Hi, I I am a pirate. I am a pirate. Say that one. I am a pirate. I am a pirate. The maidens all shriek in alarm. <laughs> Frederick reassures them by saying, Wait, ladies, please. I am renouncing my wild profession after church. I need after lunch. <laughs> I need your advice. But the maidens scream again, and they retreat upstage. <laughs> Frederick calls after them. Is there not one maiden here who will help me? And the maidens all yell, no, not one. No, not one. Frederick in despair cries, not one. Mabel enters and says, yes, there is one. I will help you. Oh, sisters, have you no pity? Shame, 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 shame. True, he may be a pirate, but that is not enough reason for you to fall deaf to his cries for help. Stage. The Major General steps downstage in the center 
And he says, yes, I am a major general. And he sings, I am the very model of a modern major general. Right there, 
mountains that have lived before you, right? Let's see what else we have. An expedition is a certain um, event that you're go going to make happen that's going to do something for the people around you, okay? A bowman. Anybody got an idea what a bowman is? Did you know? Yes. He's not your friend. He's your enemy. Yes, a bowman is your enemy. That's exactly what I love. Paradox. Can you say that word? Paradox. We're going to hear about paradox in this next act that's coming up. A paradox is like something that doesn't really make sense. In fact, it almost sounds like it's the opposite. Like, sometimes you have to be cruel in order to be kind. That doesn't sound right, does it? So we'll see what it is in our Act 2. In Act 2, we're going to have Leap Year. Oh, what is Leap Year? Yes, ma'am. It's what? It's what? Oh, oh. In a way, in a way it is. She said, well, you skip a year. The year still is there, but it's extended a bit. Yes? A whole year? A whole year? It might be. I'll tell you what it is. Leap year happens every four years. Every four years. Does anybody know what date leap year comes on every four years? Yes, ma'am? February 29th. That's right. Usually February just has 28 days, but every four years is a leap year, and we have February 29th. We used to have a lady, uh, let me ask you, is there anyone in here who has a birthday on February 29th? We used to have one of our volunteers who did, so we used to tease her and say, you're really only 10 years old, <laughs> but she really wasn't. Queen Victoria was queen for a very long time, and her people loved her a lot. Tarantara is a word I want you to know. Tarantara, can you say it? Tarantara. Because in the next act, we're going to be singing just that one word as part of the song. So I will hold this up, and when I hold it up, you'll sing it along with me, okay? All right. Well, I think we've got them all. Let's see if they're ready. Thank our rock has changed into a tombstone. May have noticed. Okay, but the background has changed for us too. Act two. It's nearly midnight on the ancient estate of Major General Stanley. The Major General is sitting on the tombstone, weeping into a very large handkerchief. Mabel and Frederick enter and notice that he is crying. Mabel sings, Oh, dry the glistening tear. Frederick says to him, 
Come, sir, you shouldn't sit here in this drafty old groin. You'll catch your death of cold. Mabel chimes in. It is nearly midnight, Papa. You should be in bed sleeping. We're all so worried about you. Why do you come here night after night? The Major General replies, I come to make up for having told a terrible lie. Mabel asks, What lie, Papa? The Major General confesses, To rescue my daughters from the pirates' clutches, I told them I was an orphan. And heaven help me, I am no orphan. So I come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought them dishonor. He blows his notes loudly. Frederick, trying to console him, says, I have an expedition marching against the scoundrels at midnight. They shall be swept from the face of the earth. He takes Mabel's hand and he says, And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. The Major General asks, What is this expedition? Frederick tells him that he has called on the local police for help. The sound of marching feet is heard. Frederick says, Ah, here they come now. The police enter from the back of the audience, down the center aisle, high-stepping in single file, led by the sergeant. They form a line, and they sing when the bowman bears his cue. Paradox. A most ingenious paradox. 
We knew you'd enjoy it, so we've come to tell it to you. The Pirate King continues. Well, it concerns the month of February. Usually February has 28 days, but every fourth year, it has 29. You, Frederick, were born in a leap year on the 29th of February. Fred Frederick shrugs his shoulders and says, So? The Pirate King explains, So, though you have lived 21 years, we go by birthdays, you're only five years old. They all laugh at the absurdity of it all. Frederick, pointing to himself, says, That is a paradox. Who would think to look at me that I'm just a little boy of five? Ruth points out, now you can't exterminate us. You're still a pirate. Frederick says, what? I was apprenticed only until I reached my 21st year. The pirate king says, no, until you reach your 21st birthday. And going by birthdays, you're only five and a little bit over. Frederick asks, do you intend to hold me to that? <coughs> the Pirate King suggests, we just leave it to your strong sense of duty. Frederick Sine says, oh, alas, my duty is only too clear. I must resume my pirate career. Suddenly he exclaims, oh, good grief. The pirate King asks, what's the matter? Frederick states as he paces around, what did I tell you? Uh, no, I can't. But as a pirate, it is my duty. Then I must. General Stanley, father of my beloved Mabel, pauses and sighs. Ruth and the pirate king move in a little closer. Frederick continues. He escaped from you by saying that he was an orphan. It breaks my heart, but I must tell you, he is no orphan and he never was one. The pirate king is furious and exclaims, The scoundrel! He tricked us out of our bride. We were merciful because of a monstrous lie. We will attack this castle tonight and the traitor will die. The pirate king and Ruth leave. Frederick is very sad. Mabel enters and says, Frederick, why are you still here? The police are waiting for you. Surely you haven't lost courage. Frederick explains to Mabel, Because I was born on leap year, I won't reach my 21st birthday for another 64 years. <laughs> so I am still bound to the pirates. <gasps> Mabel stares at him in surprise. Frederick then says to her, Farewell, dear Mabel. I'll return for you in 64 years. Wait for me. He gives her a hug and starts to leave. But he turns around as Mabel sings, Stay, Frederick, stay. <laughs>
The sergeant addresses his men. My men, I have bad news for you. Frederick has rejoined his old comrades and left us to capture the pirates all alone. Now the police hear the pirates and they tremble in fear. The sergeant quietly yells, the pirates are coming. We must hide. Police comically try to conceal themselves in the area of the tombstone. Frederick the Pirate King, Ruth and the Pirates enter, tiptoeing and looking around. Frederick exclaims as he looks at the stage, I see a light inside. The Major General comes, hide, and the Pirates all hide too. The Major General enters carrying a lighted candle. He goes downstage and says, I thought I heard a noise. The pirates and the police all say, he thought he heard a noise, ha ha. He thought he heard a noise, ha ha. The major general is joined by all of his daughters. They want to know why he is still up at this time of night. And they say, now what is this? What is this and what is that? between the police and the pirates and they go forward and back forward and back the daughters all watch in fear finally the pirates force the police to their knees and they stand pointing their swords over them the sergeant says you have won for now but it won't last long pirate king says say you were orphans. We know that game. The sergeant replies, we have a stronger claim. He draws a small union jack from his pocket. We charge you to yield in Queen Victoria's name. The pirate king is baffled and says, you do? The police all reply, we do. And they all hold up their flags. The police get up to their feet and the pirates kneel. The pirate king loyally pro proclaims, we yield at once because with all our faults, we love Queen Victoria. The major general orders them all to be locked up in jail. Just then, Ruth comes forward and says, what happened? Everyone looks at her. These pirates are not common thieves. They are all noblemen or politicians who have gone wrong. The pirates proudly stand up. The daughters are delighted and they all smile and hug each other. The major general steps forward, faces the audience, and he says, resume your ranks and legislative duties and take my daughters, all of whom are beauty. To celebrate the occasion, the Pirate King directs everyone with his sword. Each pirate takes a daughter as a partner. Frederick takes Mabel, and the Major General chooses Ruth, and they all begin to sing and dance around. The police pretend to play trumpets on their bill clubs in time to the music. Ta-ra, 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 ta-ra. <laughs>
the end of the Pirates of Penzance. Let's give them one more hand. We'll get them At the end of every performance, I, we ask our characters to come forward when I call your name to please go downstage center, take a bow, then come back to your line. Okay? So first of all, could I have the Sergeant of Police? Sergeant, step forward. Take a bow. And now, other police will talk to your sergeant. Join it. There you go. Okay. Excellent job. All right. And then back in line. Pirate King, would you please come out? So 